<laughs> I mean, this is pretty dated. Um, as you can see, I put this together in March of 2017. It's about five years old. Um, but that's okay. So um, the reason I'm doing this is um, the idea is if you're if you've seen some classic work of anime um, and you really love it, what are some other things that are kind of like that classic work of anime? Um, and I also want to cover in here, in some of these instances, not just other things that are like that anime, but also other anime that were influential for that show. So if you really liked Evangelion, what were some of the shows that kind of influenced the makers of Evangelion? That kind of a thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of dive into it. Um, so a few quick ground rules. I'm not going to do any spoilers here, um, except like episode one stuff. Uh, I'll be going pretty quickly. Um, I'll be free to ask questions in chat as we go. Um, and I would love to get your all recommendations in chat for these things, uh, things that you would recommend for, to folks who like a particular show. Um, and then finally, of course, none of these are clones, right? It's not like if you like this show, you are guaranteed to like this other show. Personal taste um, comes down to things and everything is going to be a little different. So just got to get that out of the way. Okay. Um, you know who I am. Let's start with ReZero. Um, full disclosure, I put this one in here. I have not actually seen much of ReZero, just little bits and pieces. Um, but this is kind of the most, this was the most recent, um, harem anime, uh, that I, uh, I could use as a reference that people kind of understand what I was talking about. Uh, so if you liked ReZero and ReZero-esque anime, what are some other anime you might like instead? Um, I would recommend trying the Magical Index Scientific Railgun franchise. It has a science fantasy aspect to it, uh, which is really cool and fun. It also developed this sort of two-pronged franchise. Certain Magical Index, which focuses on this girl named Index and kind of the characters there. And Certain Scientific Railgun, which focuses on um, uh, uh, this other girl uh, and what's going on there. And the thing with that is that um, both uh, uh, characters cross over between the two storylines. They both exist in the same world. They're both kind of in the same physical place in general. Um, it's just we're, we're focusing on two different groups of characters, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, and you see more and more of that story as time goes on, and it's definitely kind of a harem-esque kind of a story. Um, also recommend Tenchi Moyo, the original harem anime. This is considered the, the show in the franchise that really started the harem anime uh, trope um, or, or genre. There, there, obviously, there were anime beforehand that kind of that, that were similar. Bravo One Half being a, a classic example. But Tenchi Moyo is really the, the the first that feels like a harem anime. Huge franchise, tons of TV shows. There are probably more than this now. Um, it also has that science fantasy aspect. It is set in the modern day, well, modern day of nineties, two thousand, two thousand tens, two thousand twenties Japan, um, but with. Uh, uh, Space pirates, you know, crash landing on Earth and uh, all that kind of good stuff there. Um, Tenchi was one of the shows that got me into anime, so I'm going to recommend that a lot. But, again, sort of similar harem premise there to ReZero. Um, um, also, I want to try El Hazard. Uh, El Hazard has the, um, is fun because it's, it's a pretty big franchise. Several OVAs, uh, I think two TV series? One or two TV series. Maybe just one. Um... And it has this sort of quasi Arabian, I mean Arabian in the sense of like Thousand and One Nights, um, Arabesque kind of uh, a fantasy, kind of Middle Eastern inspired um, style to the world. Do I have some screenshots of here? I do indeed. Um, although this is technically, um, I think, a poster from it. But as you can see, it has this lovely fantastical element to it. Um, El Hazar is a lot of fun. It does have a bit of a harem vibe to it. Although the, the main character is really focusing on just one or two of those characters. But it's really um, a really fun thing. And more on the adventure side of things. More going out into the world, doing things, you know, encountering bad guys, that kind of stuff. But less combat. Uh, it's more about exploring the world, which I like a lot. Especially in, in OVA 1. Um, it's more about... Finding and experiencing this world as opposed to, you know, lots of fight scenes, which fight scenes are fun, but um, uh, those can tend to kind of churn up time uh, in a story. And uh, so El Hazard, again, fun little sort of harem anime. Um, obviously, SAO, 
Um, um, oh, I'm sorry. What about SAO? If you like Sword Art Online, you're a fan of the classic SAO, are there other anime kind of like that that you might want to try? I would recommend going back to one to probably the first of these, Dot Hack Sign, a 26 episode TV series from I think 1999, 2001, something around there. Um, it is about characters trapped in a video game, so very much the same concept, except in Dot Hack Sign, um, only a few characters are trapped in the video game. Most of them are logging in and out and playing normally, so it does not have that the exact same setup. Um, uh, but it does deal with a, a with similar kind of uh, elements as SAO, and it is part of a, a much, much larger franchise, video games, um, other anime, manga, etc. So there's a little plenty to sink your teeth into with Dot .hack, um, and Dot .hack sign is kind of the intro to all of the story. So it's kind of setting up a lot of the things in, in the later, uh, 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 later Dot .hack stories. A lot of folks are intimidated by Dot .hack because they see all the different things. Dot .hack sign is good because it is, again, sort of introducing all of these things. I will say, Dot .hack sign um, thus does not, does not like finish out a lot of the story that it sets up. Um, it finishes out some of it, uh, but this anime is more about the, the experience of the characters, what the characters go through, and getting them to a point at the end of the story as opposed to having every plot thread be resolved by the end of the anime. Uh, just be aware of that. Again, I found it to work as long as I realized, okay, this is more of a setup anime. Um, okay, how about Madoka Magica? A lot of folks seem to like Madoka Magica. I don't know why. I kid. Um, I guess a lot of folks were, were kind of blown away by Madoka Magica. So are there other anime somewhat similar or, or um, uh, that have kind of... Um, similar takes on Magical Girl as Magical Magica. A few I'd recommend. Um, one would be Magical Project S, also known as Pretty Sammy. A mid-90s TV show. Um, it starts out as very much a parody of Magical Girl. Um, it is having fun with the Magical Girl thing, to give you an idea, in episode one, when Sasami, the main girl, transforms... Um, she goes through the whole transformation sequence. There's a little bit of a dot, dot, dot. And then she goes back to the person, hands her her wand and says, I can't do this. I look so really, really stupid. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so it's that kind of, a, kind, of, kind of a take on Magical Girl. Um, but then as the story progresses, do I have any screenshots of this? Yeah, so this is very much the, the tone and the feel of Magical Project S. Um, transformation and kind of ridiculous outfits. It is a spin-off of the Tenchi Moyo franchise um, because they had a surprise success when they did this little parody of one of their OVAs. Um, but as the story goes on, there is some surprising darkness to it. There are some dark twists to the story. And you start seeing that in episode one, um, kind of hints of it, uh, which they do very much explore later on in the show. It's definitely not as dark as Madoka, um, it's, and especially not uh, in terms of the amount of time spent on it, but there is some dark stuff that they spend a, a fair amount of time on later on in the show. So this is one of those things where, oh no, we're actually exploring the implications of these magical girl um, uh, transformations and contracts and so forth and so on. Um, you also might want to try uh, Nanoha. The Nanoha franchise, lots of TV shows, OVAs, very uh, much so forth and so on. I would say this is the uh, an early version of the, the trope you see in Madoka Magica, where the antagonist is not what she seems, right? Where you think you're fighting this one, you know, enemy, and it turns out there's more going on there than it first appears. Uh, in a lot of Magical Girl series, the enemy, you know, you don't know a lot about them, but you're you're really just more you. Over the course of the show, you find out more about what their motivations are. It's not that you suddenly find out, oh, they're actually the good guys, right? It's just they're mysterious, and that is cleared up over the course of, of the, the story. In Nanoha, no, there, there's more going on with the bad guys, and especially with the, like, the, the bad girl, if you will, than immediately appears. So that is there. And there's some dark stuff here. There is some dark stuff here, be, be aware. In that um, first season, at least, that's all I've seen. Um, and uh, yeah, Nanoha was massive in Japan. Um, did not take off, take off over here. 
very much for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. But absolutely massive. I would argue Nanoha was kind of the prototype um, for um, Madoka Magica. That, uh, um, you know, Nanoha was kind of Madoka too early. <laughs> the Western the West just wasn't ready for, for it. Um, oh, well. I should also point out Nanoha is, I think it was early 2000s when it first came out. And um, animation quality is a little low sometimes. It's fine much of the time, but there, there, there are some, you know, it's... There was a time when budgets were kind of low, and this is this is one of those. At least in, in season one. Um, if you really like the the idea of Magical Girl of, of Madoka Magica, not just because it is a reversal, but for the, the idea of really getting deep at the themes of Magical Girl and exploring those, the idea of really deconstructing a genre. Uh, Princess Tutu would be a great example of that. Uh, show from 2002. Boy, this is a deconstruction. Um, it is ballet themed, although don't let that be turned off a turn off for you. Uh, it's not like there are huge like ballet sequences. Um, uh, instead, Princess Tutu does. Um, I mean, she fights through dance. It is kind of interesting, and there are dance sequences, but it's not like you know 20 minutes of Swan Lake in the middle of, of the show. Um, but yeah, Tutu is really interesting as a um, in asking what are magical girls doing? Why are they doing that? And what are the kind of consequences of that? But not in a particularly dark way. Um, Tutu has a, 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 a generally pretty light tone much of the way through. Um, but there is a lot of angst and drama behind what's going on with the other characters and so forth. Um, I really love Princess Tutu. It is a remarkable work, um, partly because it, it is you know, exploring a lot of these things. And it also deals a lot with like mythology and fairy tales and that kind of stuff, which, again, Magical Girl often tends to um, uh, trade on, is those, those fairy tale themes of, you know... Um, well, let's be honest, Magical Girl is, is similar to Cinderella, right? Cinderella is sort of... Cinderella's a magical girl! Huh. She has a transformation sequence. Yeah. I think Cinderella is a magical girl. Um, and then, of course, there's Revolutionary Girl Utna. Speaking of deconstructing these things. Now, um, Utna arguably is not magical girl, although many magical girl elements are in Utna, and I think that is intentional. I think Utna is a sort of magical girl in the sense that it is using several of the tropes of magical girl while not telling a traditional magical girl story, not having a lot of the very specific elements, like there's no wand uh, or the magical compact or whatever, um, and um, the main character is not fighting against some amorphous enemy from the moon or what have you. Um, uh, she's fighting against the student council at her school for a bunch of it. Um, but it's, re it, yeah, it's really a trip. It, it's really weird, um, and it is very deconstructionist and, and much more symbolic. Um, the characters aren't really... When watching Utena, you really are aware that you're watching an anime. It is constructed. It is very built. Um, and, like, you definitely get in, you know, involved and interested in the characters. But um, it doesn't have the naturalism of, like, a Studio Ghibli film. Um, it's not a kind of a lived-in world. It, it feels like the world is almost like a set. Um, in and of itself, but in a way that is interesting, in a way that is is thoughtful, um, and that is very much um, makes you think. Utna makes you think. Um, and again, here's sort of the general visual style of Utna, um, notable for the fact that Utna dresses like a boy. Um, and so for a show from the 90s dealing with kind of gender issues, um, it is also a story in which um, the main character literally fights over a girl for the possession of her. So there's a lot of feminist elements to Utna as well, um, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, and roses. Roses everywhere. Um, okay, let's say you've watched Cowboy Bebop. A lot of people have. Is there other anime that is kind of sort of like Cowboy Bebop in some way? Eh, kind of, sort of, yeah. 
Um, probably the, the first thing that comes to mind is a show called Coyote Ragtime Show. Um, pretty short, 12 episodes, 2006. Um, I described it as Guardians of the Galaxy crossed with Cowboy Bebop. Um, it's a little more out there than Bebop. Um, it's about a basically a group of um, criminals out on their last job. You know, the, the one last job that's going to get them that, that big score they'll, they'll be able to retire on. Um, and we'll see if that actually works or not. Um, it's a really fun show. It's very anime. Um, you know, here's your crew. Uh, kind of the, the classic thing. You know, you've got your, uh, your let's see here, um, handsome roguish pilot guy. You've got the lowly, um, but she has a secret. Uh, you have the, like, the engineer, you know, intelligent guy, and the um, hard-charging, you know, spitball, or, or um, uh, you know, tough as, tough as nails leader guy. Really, really love that. Um, and also, of course, they are being followed by android-made girls who use guns a lot. Very anime. It is very anime. So it doesn't have that kind of, um, again, kind of lived-in noir universe of Cowboy Bebop. It's, it's, a, it's a little more anime. <laughs> But I like that a lot. And again, if you go in expecting that, that is totally fine. Um, um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Um, also might want to try Gungrave. I have not seen all of Gun Gungrave. It's the first like, couple of episodes. Um, by the creator of, of Trigun. Um, at least the character designs by the creator of Trigun. Um, it was originally a video game and then adapted into an anime. Um, what's interesting about Gungrave, do I have screenshots here? Yeah. Um, the story starts out in very much a quote of a um, slum ruled by triads. Uh, it is very much like that crime storyline within Bebop. That is very much feels like what they're, what they're, they're trading on in Gungrave in terms of the storyline there. So if you like that aspect of Bebop storyline, there's a lot of that in Gungrave. Again, I have not seen the later stuff, and there is some very over-the-top sort of fantastical stuff here um, of, you know, giant guns and the big coffin, I mean, as you can see, this gets ridiculous, um, but that first initial story feels very Bebop, Trigun Vicious stuff. Um, yeah, it's, you know, just straight up John Woo right here, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I'd also recommend Bacano. I'm surprised I don't have any screenshots of Bacano. Um, a supernatural mafia anime, so again, going back to the, the, the mafia triad aspect, but instead of science fiction, it's more fantasy. Um, but fantasy in the, as in, in the sense of uh, characters with interesting kind of powers and abilities. Um, in, I think it's Chicago. It's a Chicago and New York City in like the, the 20s and 30s. Um, that sort of era. The, the classic gangster era in America. Um, really stylish, really cool, really fun. And pretty high budget for the time. Uh, really, really cool. Um, First major anime work by the folks who later made Durara. So if you like that, back to Bacano. Um, and there's Outlaw Star. Um, the anime TV series, um, space opera sci-fi series, made by the same studio as Cowboy Bebop, the same year as Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> so you can see a lot of the sort of stylistic similarities. Um, the style is a little more traditional anime here, obviously. Um, but there are definitely moments when it has kind of a Bebop vibe to it, I think. Um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to say. Um, it is definitely much more of a um, space adventure story. Um, more, um, more big action. And I would argue aimed at a slightly younger audience. Um, but, um, again, it has a bit of that Bebop feel to it. Of being a ragtag crew out in space trying to make a buck, you know, day by day. Um, JJ in the chat asked, would you consider Space Dandy and Trigon the same man as Bebop? I do not. Um, they came out at the same time, and a lot of people would kind of recommend them, but they're not really similar, I don't think. I don't, I don't think Trigon has a lot of crossover with Bebop, um, stylistically, or in terms of its themes, things like that. Um, uh, same thing with Space Dandy. I think Space Dandy is just you know, this weird anthology kind of um, animation... Um, experimentation show. Um, Space Dandy isn't really about being sci-fi. It's really more about what weird story, what, what weird animation can we do 
um, today in Space Dandy. But definitely both worth checking out for other merits. I also going to recommend for fans of Cowboy Bebop, Crusher Joe. Um, this was made into a film in 1983, um, an OVA later on, based on a, a very successful series of light novels. So much like you know, we had Golden Age sci-fi uh, fiction over here in America, we had all the you know, big space adventure stories in the 50s and such, uh, the 30s and the 40s indeed. Uh, and then a lot of those got adapted into various stories like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. This is kind of similar over in Japan, although obviously came out much later. Um, big space opera. Now, I would not normally recommend this as a Cowboy Bebop thing because it is more, like, again, sort of golden age sci-fi thing. But um, uh, it's also very 80s. <laughs> I should say the style of it is very 80s. It's very 80s. Um, but also, I should point out, um, it has really awesome uh, ship designs. Very, very, very cool sci-fi. Um, and it, it is about a um, sort of a crop-topped um, fighter guy, a, an attractive female, a big swarthy dude, and a rather angry kid character. Sound familiar? Just saying. Just saying. Um, and they also have a robot, in case you're wondering where Ayn was. So, yeah, I, I suspect, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but there are some pretty strong through lines from Crusher Doe to Cowboy Bebop in terms of the, just the, the setup of the crew. Um, and obviously the, the personalities are not exactly the same, but I found that kind of interesting. And, you know, big sci-fi action adventure story, not a bad thing. Um, okay, what if you like Kiki's Delivery Service? Are there other shows like are there other things like Kiki's Delivery Service out there? Like, why am I choosing that? Yes, indeed, there is. Um, one thing I'd recommend is You'll Be the Five Tailed Fox. This is a Korean film from 2007 about a um, a young fox spirit girl out in the woods who encounters some human children and decides to help them out. Very similar kind of themes as Kiki, although in this case, obviously, um, she is. Starts out very much alone, doesn't know what she's doing, and decides to help other people. But, again, similar themes. Um, uh, as you can see, um, cute, um, uh, fun style. Fairly simplistic animation and so forth, but really, really lovely. Um, I'm going to like this one a lot. Then there's Hanasako Iroha. A, the story of a teenage girl basically taking on her first, the first job of her life. It's... Um, <laughs> Um, she, uh, so basically her grand, grandmother runs this hot springs resort and she decides to go work at actually she does not work at a hot spring resort technically she, she works at a traditional Japanese inn there is no attached hot spring I believe to their uh, to their inn um, there is one in the neighborhood but I don't think they have a, an actual hot spring um, but it's about a you know, young teenage girl taking on responsibility for the first time in her life um, so Whereas in Kiki, she, Kiki, Kiki obviously is pursuing that. This is more thrust upon the main character here. But it is exploring those themes of what it's like to have your first job to take on those responsibilities. Um, then there's Somebody's Dreamers, which is pretty darn close to Kiki. The main character is a girl who is manifesting magical powers. This is set in a, uh, an alternate present in which people with magical powers exist. That is known. People can kind of cast spells and do magic. And because it's existed for a long time, there is a legal framework around that. You know, magic can potentially do incredibly world-altering things, so it is heavily regulated. Um, you cannot use magic unless you have gone through a training program with a senior witch, uh, I think, and I, which I, be I believe is a gender-neutral term in their world. And, um, and then, like, you have to submit paperwork to cast magic. You have to get approval to cast magic in this world. And so it's about her um, going to the big city, um, now that she's manifested her powers, to apprentice for the first time. Um, and, yeah, it is basically Key's Delivery Service, the TV show, although the, the, the character is a little older. I think she's, like, 15 um, in this. Um, I really like the overall art style. 
of this. Um, it's fairly simplistic, um, but I think it really works for the show. Um, and it's just about this, you know, teenage girl starting her her life and figuring out how to use those powers properly. One thing I really like about Sunday's Dreamers too is the fact that um, it explores these themes in some detail. And by that I mean that it's not just, oh, what do I do with my powers? It's, what are the implications of being able to alter the course of somebody's life because you can, um, for example, um, replace a lost limb, right? Um, sometimes living with something bad happening to you puts you on a trajectory that you would not otherwise have been on. The classic thing of, you know, I, I got fired, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, this idea that people come to witches and ask them to fix their problems, is that always the right thing to do? Is it, is it always proper? Is it always effective uh, to just wave a magic wand and solve people's problems? Does that actually solve the problem? So I like that a lot, and it addresses that pretty directly. Um, and not just in an episode by episode way, where obviously you'll have some episodes where that will come up, but that's kind of a, that becomes kind of a theme of the show of her grappling with that question. Um, okay, there's this show called Neon Genesis Evangelion. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, came out a couple of years ago. Um, I don't I don't think anything really happened about it. It's not very popular. So, um, but you may have come across it. So. Are there other anime like Evangelion in some way? And here's where I'm going to lean more heavily on shows, um, some shows that are like Evangelion and others that were more um, inspirations for Evangelion. Yeah, exactly. Um, one show that we know was a big inspiration was Space One by Ideon. Uh, this was one of Yoshiki Tomino's big shows in the, well, in 1980, creator of Gundam, T Tomino. And... Um, it was made after he thought Gundam was more or less a failure, um, or at least not a huge success. Um, and so Ideon was kind of his next big thing. Ideon's really interesting because it is very much a dark, depressing, sad anime. Um, bad things happen to the characters. By the way, if you've ever seen this symbol, um, it may be like scratched on graffiti, or, or scratches graffiti on a wall somewhere in anime. This crops up... Um, a lot in anime, especially in the 80s and the 90s. Um, and again, just kind of in various places. That is the Ide symbol. That is uh, the crest of the Ideon. And it became a, um, again, sort of an otaku symbol. Uh, became something that otaku would draw and, 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 and send around as a signal of, we all know what this is. You know what this is. You know, If you're a geek, you know what this is. So you'll see it here and there. Um, um, the Ideon's also really, really big. Uh, and when I say it was big, I mean physically it is big. I'm going to see if I can switch over here. Um, uh, so this is a drawing of various mecha to scale. So each of these mecha are to scale. Um, to give you an idea, um, let's see here. That up there is Gundam Wing Zero from Gundam Wing. And that's Ideon. Ideon's really, really big. <laughs> it's a really huge thing. Um, uh, this lady um, asked, what does the Ide symbol mean? That's a really good question. Um, it's not entirely clear. Like, the show never fully explains what this Ide symbol is. It is, um, it is a signal for the power of the Ideon which um, is used to kind of win battles. When the Ide signal, uh, when the Ide symbol glows, it is sort of charging up these powers um, and using them to do crazy big um, uh, combat stuff. In fact, things like this. Uh, <laughs> it uses a lot of guns, there's a lot of weapons, there's a lot of explosions, there's a lot of, of combat and uh, people dying in Ideon. Um, and so this is an example of the Ide symbol giving the Ideon its, its huge power. Um, oh, and, and in fact, in case anyone asks, the mecha in the, the mecha in the back, all the way in the back, that is Gunbuster. 
Um, but yeah, um, the but it's unclear in the anime where the Ide symbol came from. It is like some ancient alien artifact. No one knows kind of why they made it or how it works or so forth and so on. But it is kind of a symbol for getting your power, um, getting great power. Um, yeah, also, the Ideon can do stuff like this. That is it slicing a, a, um, a ship in half from the inside. It's a really powerful mecha. Um, to give you an idea, and I know I mentioned this in other, in other, other things, um, uh, later in the show, the Ideon gets, in, as part of its armaments, a black hole gun, which does what it implies. That's what it says on the tin. Which is not its most powerful attack. <laughs> it is not the extent of its powers. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of things done blowed up in this show. Um, it's also just, um, oh, it also features a, um, um, a young Ichiro Itano doing a lot of missiles going all over the place. So if you know the Itano Circus, that you know, crazy missile animation uh, common in the 80s and 90s. That was pioneered by Ichiro Itano. And you see some of the initial parts of that in Ideon. Um, there's also a lot of just uh, characters being depressed and trying to kill each other. Um, as I've said before, um, this, I think, really captures the spirit of Ideon. People are either depressed or angry at each other. That's pretty much the, the tone of it. Um, and, again, the folks behind Evangelion has said it was very inspirational to them. Um, you have the constantly kind of stick up her butt female pilot um, who's always calling the main character an idiot um, you have the well <laughs> you know just saying just saying and in the back sort of a Masato um, um, yeah a lot of those things are there also a lot of people getting blown up real good um, a lot of people getting blown up real good they really like showing people dying um uh, yes. Another show influential on Evangelion in Mobile Suit Gundam, partly for historical reasons. And I would argue that this is influential partly because Gundam was just... It, it treated its subject with such seriousness um, that it does not feel over the top most of the time. Gundam was a really... Um, Gundam was a signal that anime was a mature medium and could handle really weighty topics. Um, not the first anime to, to potentially do that, but the again the creators of Evangelion have said like this this really when we watch this as like teenagers this really felt like wow anime can do so much because um, it does so much in Gundam. Moving on to kind of Evangelion ripoffs so to speak, um, and I don't mean these are ripoffs. Totally, but shows where it's like, oh, these feel very Evangelion inspired. Arjun Asoma is one of those anime that got licensed and brought out over in America for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I, again, I think it's partly because it is very Evangelion like. Uh, 2000 TV series, very weird character designs, very weird mecha designs. Um, this is our protagonist. Um, it looks, again, he just kind of looks very notable. Although, granted, in the story, he has that kind of, that happens to him, if you will. Um, but very distinctive um, things. Here's the here's what the mecha look like, um, and like I believe this is the hero mecha. Um, yeah, obviously very uh, Evangelion esque. Um, and then of course you got Hattie, the psychic girl. Um, the characters I would say are not very Evangelion esque. It's more kind of the scenario and and style and approach of Evangelion. Then of course there's Razafon. Um, a lot of folks talk about Razafon as being kind of a, uh, almost a remake of Evangelion that addresses a lot of the issues with Evangelion, although Razafon definitely goes in its own direction. It is very musically inspired, um, and by that I mean, like, sound and music and audio tones are used in the show offensively and defensively, um, you know, sonic attacks, basically, so that is a whole thing, some very trippy visuals. Um, it's a very weird, interesting show. Again, this is your main mecha here. This is what the main mecha looks like. Um, pretty unusual. Um, but that said, the, the overall sort of um, character design style um, is actually fairly Evangelion-like, I would say, uh, all told. 
Um, and then I'd also recommend Gun Parade March. Gun Parade March for the idea of sort of teenagers caught in a terrible situation and kind of doing the best that they can. Um, it is set in an alternate present where um, the Nazis during World War II apparently accidentally opened a spatial rift and let in massively dangerous destructive aliens and could not close that rift. And so, you know, imagine the alien from Alien. Um, a bunch of those start pouring through a portal onto Earth. And so basically humanity starts getting killed off. And so this is set 50 years after that, where, hum you know, there aren't many humans left, and a lot of them are in Japan because that was so far away from the epicenter of all that destruction. And so the main characters are in a... Um, let's see if I can uh, show you an example. Yeah. Um, so the main characters are all um, high schoolers who have all been drafted. Um, so many people have died that the draft age has lowered because you've got to. So when you enter high school, you are automatically enrolled in the military. You're drafted in the military, and your high school class is also your combat unit. Um, so it is very much a, a kind of about that. Now, it starts off with this fairly, I mean, it's obviously dramatic mecha versus aliens um, um, story, but it starts out fairly light in tone, um, and then it stops being that. Um, or at least there is a major twist partway through and a, a tonal shift partway through, and there's some very dark stuff going there. Um, just be aware of that. Um, some some very serious moments in the show. It's not like it doesn't come out of nowhere because of kind of what's going on. But um, I'll just point out that the implication is like people can die. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, other things. Um, I would also recommend Duel: Parallel of Troubled Adventure to Evangelion fans because Duel is one of the few, possibly the only anime series that is clearly set up to just directly parody Evangelion. Um, it is just like, let's do an Evangelion story, but we'll cross it over with like harem tropes. Uh, and it is by the creator of, of Tenchi Moyo, so he knew what he was doing. Um, uh, the main character is a sort of traditional Shinji-esque character. Um, and uh, he has started to see Mecha battling in his city, even though they're not there. They're just illusions. They're just shadows, essentially, um, in... Um, um, in his world. And then, of course, suddenly they're not. Um, and he crosses over to this other world where Mecha are actually battling on the streets. Um, and so you get various characters involved there, all of whom, of course, um, are interested in him. Um, you have, you know, your, your white, red, and blue Mecha um, who are all in, you know, the, the, the things. Uh, very much a thing. Um, you have definitely not Asuka. It's definitely not Asuka. No... Not, definitely not. And a definitely not Ray. Definitely not Ray at all in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so, yeah. But what I like is it takes all of these tropes and tells its own story with it. There's, there's a whole original thing going on in their world that it explores and has fun with. Um, so, it is not just, we're going to parody Evan Evangelion for 13 episodes. It is, we're going to parody it while telling our own story. Which I, I really, really like. And... If you get into Tenchi at all, there are some tie-ins to other things in the Tenchi universe. Um, finally, if you like Samurai Champloo and Samurai anime in general, what are some other recommendations there? Um, I'd recommend Tsukigagi Ron. I recommend this a lot. The, it is a um, road trip you know, uh, Samurai anime. So two Samurai on the road, except it is uh, two women, which is really cool. Um, Ron here um and uh, lady meow of the iron cat fist this is lady meow of the iron cat fist and this is also lady meow of the iron cat fist this is basically who she is um to give you the idea and then this is ron doing what do she does best um female samurai and this uh, there were female samurai by the way unusual but they certainly existed um so this is pretty historically accurate and that's what i love about tsukigaki ron it is a surprisingly historically accurate well-researched show it really feels like, you know, this is what it was like in the Edo era in Japan in revealing some aspects of, of history and, and story and so forth. So, whereas Samurai Champloo has a lot of anachronisms, 
Um, this feels very, very grounded, but in sort of this, this action comedy format, which I really, really like. Then, of course, there's one of the big ones, Rurouni Kenshin. Um, so if you're looking for um, a story about a, a, um, more of a male samurai, you're going you're doing his stuff. And Kenshin is, I would say, a little bit closer to the uh, sort of combat approach of Samurai Champloo, where you have kind of you know, um, the, 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 the huge jumps, you know, and being able to push each other back and forth, where um, the combat in, in Samurai Champloo is a little, um, um, you know, a little exaggerated, a little beyond actual physics. Kenshin is a little bit more beyond actual physics, but not like one punch, or not, like, not like one piece. Right, it's not completely absurd, um, but it is kind of pushing the bounds of shonen action um, possibility. It's really, really cool. Um, what's also cool about Kenshin is that it is set in an actual historical period in Japan. Um, like, we get dates. Um, now, it is not exactly historically accurate. Um, the you, know, you will come across government you know, people in the government who are not them. You'll come across characters who are anime reworks of historical characters where it's like that character was not actually like that they were not that old at that time that kind of stuff so it plays around a bit with the with these specifics but this is an excellent representation of like meiji era japan um and it's also fun like there, there's a lot of comedy to roni kenshin which i really like some of the later stuff not so much um but it's just a, a really fun ride through um late 1800s japan um then there's roni kenshin ova1 which is none of those things very dark Finally, if you like Shirobako, um, and again, I, this was in the presentation because Shirobako was relatively recent when I originally made this, yeah. um, but you get, um, if you're interested in anime about anime, I often recommend Animation Runner Kuromi, which is a 2001 OVA set at an anime studio. A lot of fun, very much a screwball comedy, very, very goofy, but does a good job of uh, representing what uh, life is actually like at an anime studio. Um, again, goofy and silly, but educational. Uh, you know, you get a pretty good idea of the process of making an anime out of animation on Um with all of the, the fun that, that is involved with that. Um, uh, of course, more recently, we have Seiyu's Life, which is an anime about being a voice actor, um, if you're interested in that. Um, Midex Lane in the chat asks about Shozo Tubaki. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, do you have any recommendations? Are there any anime that you would like thoughts about? Um, any, any suggestions for you for any of these? Um, I would love to hear from all of you in chat. I'm looking up Shoujo Tsubaki. I do not... It, um, it does not um, immediately leap to mind. looks sort of Junji Ito-like. It looks like. Um, boy. I don't know. I... I I cannot, off the top of my head, think of other anime similar to that, to be honest. Um, looking at some visuals, um, there's some stuff in, in um, Neo Tokyo, Mani Mani, uh, that is a little bit similar to this. But in terms of just like really weird psychological horror but in that way of just really bizarre huh nothing leads to mind to be honest nothing leads to mind huh interesting yeah, yeah. not exactly cool all right we're gonna take a quick break and then come back with the weekly dig to talk about eyes of mars and anime news so I will see you all in about 10 minutes.